My name is Mike. I'm a respiratory therapist, and today I want to talk a little bit about oxygen tanks, when and how to use them, as well as the equipment needed to set them up. It is important to note that when you are prescribed home oxygen, you should receive a setup folder that contains the majority of this information, as well as safety guidelines and storage guidelines too. Oxygen tanks come in a variety of different sizes and types. You can see in front of us we have an E tank, a D tank, and a B tank, which is commonly referred to as an M6 tank. The E tank is the largest of the tanks you'll see in the home. It typically is the heaviest tank. It weighs about 11 pounds when full, and it lasts for about 5 hours on a flow of 2 liters per minute. Because of its heavier weight, you typically will see this with a cart as well, which does make it easier for transport. This is usually used in medical facilities, patient discharge from hospitals, in the home. It's there as a backup in case of a power failure. The D-Tank is the most common home tank. It weighs about roughly five pounds, and it runs for approximately three and a half hours on a flow of two liters per minute. It's lightweight, easily transported in a backpack, and it's very, very capable of coming with the patient to stores, in the car, and things of that nature. The smallest tank is the B tank. This tank weighs in at about three and a half pounds, and this tank actually can run approximately four to six hours on a flow of two liters, but it requires a conserving device to use, which is a pulsed system. Just for reference sake, this tank here is about the same weight and size as a bottle of wine. But please note, make sure you open your oxygen tank before you open your wine bottle. The conserving device, which looks just like this, is a special type of regulator used with the smaller style tanks. It is a little different than the standard oxygen regulator. This device is typically prescribed to you by your doctor. What makes this unique is it requires the patient to initiate a breath in order to trigger the flow of oxygen. Thus, the patient only gets oxygen when they actually take a deep breath and allows the tank to last longer. Outside of your tank regulators, there are a few other pieces of equipment that will come with your oxygen. A small copper washer will sit inside of your regulator to seal off between the tank and the regulator itself. All full and new tanks will come with a small plastic cap uh, with a small tab on it that you can actually pull on for easy removal or a piece of plastic wrap around the neck as well. And you will also have a tank wrench. This is a very important piece as it allows you to turn on the tank and turn off the tank once your regulator is in place. Once you have all your equipment, it's time to set things up. Start by placing your tank on a flat, solid surface. Eye level is usually preferred as it allows you to see a little bit easier. Grab your tank regulator and verify that your copper washer is in place. If it's not there, Grab an extra washer and pop it in. Each regulator has a T-bar, which can be spun to the out position when placing on a tank, a gauge, which should read zero at this point, and a spot for your oxygen cannula, as well as a dial for setting liter flow. The tank neck has corresponding pin holes where the regulator pins will slide into place. Go ahead and slide the regulator over the tank neck and line the pins up so they fit into the pinholes on the tank. Twist your T-bar until the regulator is secure. Now at this point, your gauge should still read zero and your liter flow dial should also read zero. You can then take your tank wrench, set it on top of your tank, and twist in the counterclockwise direction you will notice the dial on your oxygen regulator gauge will go up to 2,000 PSI. 
2,000 PSI is where all new tanks should read. It's shaded in a green color. You will then take your nasal cannula and connect it to the bottom of the oxygen regulator. Make sure the, can the cannula is firmly in place. You will then spin the liter per minute dial to match your prescribed liter flow. All oxygen setup folders should come with a small card that will actually let you know how long your oxygen tank will last based on the type of tank you're using and your prescribed liter flow. When you are done using the oxygen, you can simply twist your tank wrench one full rotation in the clockwise direction, but leave your liter flow on to allow the oxygen to bleed through the regulator. Once your regulator dial reaches the red zero mark, you are then safe to turn your dial to the off position and remove your regulator. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.